Well, I mean, we knew it was coming, and... They're here! The 10 active document limit for the personal use license that Fusion 360 announced a little while back has now been implemented. So let's take a look at it, see how it works, and whether or how it will affect your workflow. Before I jump in, I just wanna let you know about a new thing I'm trying, and these are my live design sessions. I did one last month, it went really well, so I'm gonna do a repeat where I'll be designing my own sort of modified version of Benchy uh, from start to finish, and along the way, you'll have the ability to jump in and ask me questions. All right, hope to see you there. The information to sign up is below. All right, so first let's make sure we're all on the same page in regards to terminology here, because I know there was some confusion before on what exactly counts as a document. So I'll jump into the uh, data panel here. I'll click on the little grid icon here. And notice I'm in my home location here. So it says all projects. And these are all my projects. And think of projects as your top level folders. These, it's basically just a folder structure here. And within each project folder, you can put other folders and you can put all your other documents. So we'll jump into the um, desktop makes course here. And I've got uh, all my designs from my course. You'll notice here that I'm inside a project because it has a name there and I, it has a little home icon here. And if I click back on that home, it brings me back to the home location. So, okay, in this project folder, basically I only have um, Fusion 360 designs because that's mainly what I work with. Um, but the other two items that count against that 10 document limit are Fusion 360 drawings and Fusion 360 PCBs. Uh, anything else will not count. So if I had, um, for example, an image here that I was going to base one of these designs off of and I wanted to bring it in as an attached canvas, that's not going to count as a strike against my 10 limit. Um, so the three you need to remember are Fusion Designs, um, Fusion Drawings, and Fusion uh, 2D PCBs. So if you restart Fusion 360 after the update takes effect, you'll notice a few things. One is that within each of your designs, you have a little drop down arrow that allows you to choose between editable and read only. And if you look up here, you'll notice you have a document tracker letting you know what your capacity is. Um, so right when the uh, update takes effect, basically it'll designate all your designs as read only. Um, I have now 10 designs that I can make editable and you have the same thing on this side. So uh, it's a, just a quick way to be able to glance and see what your status is. And there are a few ways you can make a design editable. So obviously I can click on this little drop down arrow here on my cell phone stand and make it editable. And watch the um, number here. So once I give it that designation, now I have one of 10 used. So if I open up this cell phone stand here, I can easily come in and make edits and, and now I have the ability to save it. So I don't wanna save that. Um, let's close this and let's open up another one. So you don't have to um, go ahead and make it editable first. For example, uh, you can just open up a design and once I open up a design here, let's say I go ahead and make an edit. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one. And once I save it, notice up here, it adds it. As long as there's capacity, it'll add it to your editable documents. So I have two items there. Another way is you can simply create a new design. So let's create a design here. And for example, we'll just create a box here. And once I um, create this, I can save it, call it box. And now I have three here. So you see it's keeping track. And so you won't really notice a difference as long as you have space. Um, a nice touch I like that Fusion did is if you go to your home location and scroll all the way up, um, under your my recent data, you have my editable documents. If you double click there, it's a quick way to show all your editable documents. So no matter what project folder they're in, they'll all be listed here. So here you can again change the designation. So let's say I'm done with this box. I don't want to make any more changes. I can simply change the designation to read only and watch over here. Um, it says three of 10. I'll go read only. I'll get this message that says, are you sure you want to make this read only? I'm going to say yes or make read only. And now I'm back down to two of 10. Okay, so that's all straightforward. Um, and I'm, I really like that they made this uh, sort of quick filter here that you can just quickly access all your editable documents. That's gonna make it so much easier to just come in and manage this. 
Okay, so let's take a look now and see what happens when you've reached your 10 capacity. So let me go back down to my desktop makes course here. And I'll go ahead and make a bunch of these editable until I've reached my capacity, just so we can see how this works. So I'm at seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, so it says 10 of 10 and I automatically get this message. Editable Fusion 360 document image reached. And if I click on this folder here, so it gives me a button actually, which is nice, that will take me right away to all my editable documents. And again, here I can come in and choose which ones I want as read only, click OK or click make read only. And there we go, it brings it back down to, um, you know, nine out of 10. So once you reach your capacity, you can just come back here and make those changes. Um, so, okay, let me go back and let's see what happens when we get to 10 and we try to edit a different uh, design. So, uh, okay, I've got 10 of 10 and let me open something else. So I'll open up, um, let's see, we'll do this uh, soap dish here. Okay, so right away you see I've got the little red lock here. It says read only. And let's see if I try to edit this. Let's extrude this out. So it'll let me make changes. So I can actually come in and play with a design, um, but I don't think it's gonna let me save it. So if I go to save, okay, and then it's gonna tell you you've reached your limit. Um, let's see what happens when we create a new design here. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the same thing. So create a design. And then let's try to save it. Yep, same thing. Okay, and so that's pretty straightforward, right? Um, message pops up, it says my editable document. So once you've reached that limit, this seems like it'll always stay here. So you can just come here. Uh, we'll make a bunch of these read only. Okay, now I'm under 10, I can go ahead and continue working. Okay, so this looks like it's gonna be pretty manageable and straightforward and easy. Um, I know a lot of people were worried that if this was gonna be a process, you know, that it was gonna make using the software a bit of a pain. Um, but what I'm seeing is that uh, no, this it's really not gonna affect my workflow at all, especially given that I have this um, quick filter here, my editable documents. Boom, just go ahead and um, designate the ones I'm done working on and you know, I'm good to go. Okay, and the final thing I wanna look at is working with assemblies. So let's bring in this electronics enclosure here. And this is made up of, I have the actual enclosure in the Arduino board is actually its own separate model that was brought in. Now, okay, so I've got nine of 10 here. So let's make one more as um, editable. Okay, so I'm at my limit. And I wanna make a change to this Arduino board. So what I would do, um, because it's its own model here and we can see that it's linked here. Let, let me update that first. Okay, so it's linked to this model here. So I'll open up the original model and let's make a change, something obvious. Make this really high, click okay, save it. Um, right, it's not gonna allow me to save, go back here. Um, it doesn't even recognize that this has changed. Um, so what I would you know have to do there make one of these read only to make room and now I can go back to my Arduino board and go ahead and save that change click OK you know now I've reached my limit but because this model here um, which is my enclosure oh so this is read only right now so it's not it's, let me see will it even update okay even though this is read only it'll actually still update the component uh, because that component is editable. Um, so that's interesting. Okay, so as long as that part, that component is an editable, even the original design you're, you're working on, you can have that read only and it'll actually make those changes. Um, but it won't let me, let's say this enclosure here, that's part of this, this design that's read only. So if I change that and go to save, it shouldn't let me. Yeah, okay, it won't. Okay, so that's good to know too. Um, if you have a part, as long as that part is editable and it's brought in, even if that design, that assembly design is read only, you can still make changes to your uh, original part and it'll make that change. So what do you guys think? A huge pain or no biggie? 
uh, is it going to affect your workflow or you know has the way fusion 360 implemented it uh, really makes it easy to work with and, and easy to manage uh, let me know your thoughts uh, down below and if you have any uh, questions or if there's anything I missed, um, go ahead and leave that below. I, you know, maybe I'll follow up with a um, video if, if it's something um, I see that I need to cover. All right. If you're looking to get started with Fusion 360 quickly and painlessly, make sure to check out my quick start mini series that I've linked below. I'm also trying something new where I'm doing these monthly live sessions. Uh, I did one last month and it went really well. So I'm going to do a repeat of it uh, in a few days, actually. So um, if you missed last month's, uh, you're going to want to check the one this month. Uh, these are live sessions, like I said, and you actually get to participate uh, with me as I design a model from start to finish, and you have the ability to ask questions along the way. So uh, check it out. Um, everyone who participated loved it, and I'm sure you will as well. All right, the information for all that is below in the description. I will see you soon with a new video.